terrible Pokemon theories that make perfect sense. This has become a regular series on the channel at this point, and if you're not familiar with it, basically, these theories I'm about to discuss are crazy, and are not meant to necessarily be thought of as true, or even possibly true, but they also make a lot of sense and are a ton of fun. So without further ado, let's get into it. So these theories might be wonderfully terrible, but what's not terrible and just wonderful is the wonderful sponsor of today's video, Dave. When it comes to something like, say, finances, we would all be happy to have a little help, and Dave can provide that help with something called Extra Cash. Extra Cash can get you up to $500 to use on literally anything, with no interest or even a credit check and paying the money back on time can even help you to establish and improve your credit. Sometimes things just happen, and you wish you had the money that you're going to be getting down the road right now, and Dave basically helps you to get that money now to take care of whatever you need to take care of. So if that sounds like something that interests you, you can download Dave today at dave.com slash hoops. That's dave.com slash hoops. Sign up for an extra cash account and get up to $500 instantly. For terms and conditions, go to dave.com slash legal. Instant transfer fees apply. Banking provided by Evolve, member FDIC. The link for that will be in the description below, and a big thank you to Dave once again for supporting the channel. So, here's my first theory. N is actually Getsis when Getsis is younger. Yes, when I said these theories are crazy, I meant it. But hear me out, cause your mind might just be blown at the same time. So this theory is something that I've been thinking about for a while, and it actually piggybacks off of another popular theory involving N. That being that N is a Zoroark. In my opinion, that theory is legit especially when you consider the Memory Link flashback of the Zoroark from Black and White 2, where the Zoroark in question doesn't even appear, but N does. I've always thought this theory was legitimately convincing, but it brought up a question. If N really is a Zoroark, then who is the real N? Because after all, Zoroark takes on the form of other people in Pokemon. It doesn't just make them up, so if the N we see in the games is actually a Zoroark, it means that Zoroark is imitating the appearance of a real, actual person with N's appearance, who we haven't seen because the one we have seen is a Zoroark. Were you able to follow all of that? Because I know that sounded kind of confusing. Anyways, I've always thought that trying to figure out the identity of this supposed real N was an interesting concept, and then it hit me. This N that Zoroark is disguising itself as is actually just Getsis from the past. First off, if you take the two at face value, they actually look a lot like each other. They both have that signature long green hair, and N just looks like he could be a younger version of Getsis, even if he wasn't ever intended to be. Furthermore, both personality-wise and especially appearance-wise, N and Getsis have a sort of Jekyll and Hyde thing going on. I mean, Getsis is like the spitting image of a Hyde persona if I've ever seen one. And as you may know, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde are two halves of the same person. Finally, this even goes so far as to fit the theme of Pokemon Black and White as a whole, because while the games have multiple different ideas and messages they try to communicate, the overarching lesson they are broadcasting is that things aren't always black and white, not always what they appear to be. 
Like, for instance, how N isn't really who he appears to be, and is actually a Zoroark, and, as this theory suggests, how Getsus isn't just this big, bad, evil team leader, but is also the real version of N that Zoroark now imitates. Next up, let's move on from Unova and check out Kanto. Kanto's got a lot of cool theory material, and part of that material is Lance. One thing about Lance that many people often bring up is that he is a so-called Dragon Master, yet most of his Pokemon, like Gyarados, Aerodactyl, and Charizard, aren't Dragon types. So what's the deal? Is Lance just a sham of a trainer? Well, I would say no, because I have a potential answer to this inconsistency, and that is that all of Lance's non-dragon Pokémon, like Gyarados, Aerodactyl, and even Charizard, were dragon-type Pokémon at one point, but then their types were changed due to the power of the dragon type. This actually makes a lot of sense if you know a thing or two about the development of Pokémon Red and Blue. First, it's been mentioned in interviews that the concept of Pokémon types didn't come about until midway through development of the Gen 1 games, so plenty of Pokémon already existed prior to types coming around, and the development of the type concept was very much a fluid situation. Therefore, the Dragon type was probably handed out much more generously back then than it is today, simply being given to any Pokémon that resembled the Dragon already, like Gyarados, who is literally based on an actual Dragon in Chinese folklore, as well as Aerodactyl and Charizard. However, once the types had been balanced out a little more, and Game Freak realized that they had made Dragon an exceptionally powerful type, they probably wanted to keep it that way, but also knew that they needed to balance it out so it wasn't overpowered. And they did that by decreasing the number of Dragon types in the game to just three. Therefore, stripping away the Dragon type off of some of Lance's Pokémon. We also know, thanks to interviews, that the Pokémon games go through a ton of balancing just like this as they are being made, so whether you look at this as more of a legit theory or just a fun idea, it makes a lot of plausible sense in my opinion. For our third theory, we're going to stay in Kanto and talk about Eevee, because get this, Eevee was originally a starter Pokémon. It kind of is in yellow and also Let's Go Eevee, but I mean it was a legit official starter, like Bulbasaur, Charmander, and Squirtle. At least theoretically anyway, and allow me to explain why that is. Just like types from the previous theory, it's also been revealed via interviews that the concept of starters didn't come about until the middle of development of Red and Blue. As such, any Pokémon that already existed at that point was technically in the running for that honor, and Eevee was probably a prime candidate. This is because starter Pokémon are supposed to do a couple of main things for the player. Number one, they teach the player about type matchups, and number two, they also show off the concept of evolution, since they can evolve twice. They're also special Pokémon in that you can't find them in the wild, and are generally very rare. Eevee checks literally all of these boxes. As the Evolution Pokémon, it shows off Evolution better than any Pokémon out there, and its ability to evolve into multiple different Pokémon also sets it apart as special, like starters are. Finally, it also allows for an understanding of type matchups as the first three evolutions are strong, weak, and neutral to each other depending on the matchup. They even represent most of the actual starter types, even the honorary electric starter type that's brought in by Pikachu. 
The only one that's missing here as of Gen 1 is grass, but as I've talked about in another video, another crazy theory I have is that a grass-type evolution could have been planned for Generation 1, since you get Eevee in Celadon City, where you also buy its evolution stones, and of those stones, the only one that doesn't evolve Eevee is the Leaf Stone and Celadon City, where you get Eevee and these evolution stones, just so happens to house a grass-type gym, and the gym leader of this gym also looks a lot like a kimono girl, who all use evolutions. So, there could have been a grass-type evolution planned for Gen 1, who was later cut. And if that was true, then Eevee's evolutions in Gen 1 would have represented all of the starter types, making this idea all the more convincing. And, as mentioned at the beginning of this theory, Eevee was even selected as a honorary starter Pokémon in Yellow and Let's Go Eevee, which, in Yellow's case, could have been done because it had almost become a starter originally, and Game Freak wanted to take the chance to implement their original idea for the Pokémon. This might not actually be true, it might not even be true in the slightest, but the stars definitely all align to make this make a whole lot of sense. And there you have it. Which one of these theories was your favorite? Be sure to let me know in the comments, and leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video for more. Be sure to check out my Pokemon remixes on Spotify as well, as not only does it support the channel immensely, but we're also doing a Pokemon Scarlet and Violet giveaway there, giving away a copy for every 3,000 new listeners I can get. Any support there is immensely appreciated, and you might even win a free game in the process. With that said, I will be back with another video very soon, and until then, as always, thank you guys so much for watching this one, I really appreciate it, and I will smell you guys later. <laughs>